Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here. According to data that was released at the end of 2022 by the World Population Review, the Indian population now sits at 1.417 billion. China just released their population numbers, which came in at 1.412 billion, 5 million people less than reported by India. And this represents a significant inflection point, as it means India has now surpassed China as the world's most populous nation. And if we combine this development with some other factors that are at play in the global economy, like the sharply discounted oil that India is now importing from Russia, along with the Indian population's habit of storing wealth in precious metals, this could have some major implications for the physical silver market moving forward. And speaking of silver, today's video is brought to you by SD Bullion, my preferred source for physical precious metals. So if you're in the market for gold or silver, make sure you check them out with the link down in the description. Now, this is actually a trend that I have discussed before, but there are some new developments in this story that I think are worth examining. First of all, this new demographic trend. China's population numbers of 1.412 billion represents the first decline in population that they've reported since the 1960s. And according to these UN population projections, India's population is going to continue to grow until sometime in the 2050s, peaking just shy of 1.7 billion people. But the Chinese population is projected to begin a long decline, meaning that India will likely continue to maintain its status as the world's most populous nation. And another thing that India has, along with its massive population, is the world's sixth largest economy as measured by GDP. But as you can see from this chart, they have by far the lowest GDP per capita in this group, with the figure sitting at less than one-fifth that of China, the second lowest on the table. And what that means is that India has a lot of room to grow its economy. And one thing that can really get economic growth kickstarted is cheap energy. Now, India has that in abundance now, with Bloomberg reporting that India is now importing 33 times more Russian oil than they were this time a year ago. Why the massive increase in Russian oil imports? Well, it's quite simple, really. That oil has become very cheap for India. The breakdown of global energy markets in 2022, with all the sanctions, price caps, and embargoes, it's put the squeeze on energy prices in many parts of the world, but one of the clear winners in this situation has been India. They've remained relatively neutral in this global conflict, and as a result, they are getting a very steep discount on oil imports from their BRICS partner, Russia, as many of the other buyers of this oil have been cut out of the equation. India relies on imports for about 85% of its energy needs, and so price movement in those imports, up or down, can have a big impact on the Indian economy. And one thing about India's burgeoning population is a large part of it is quite young, meaning economic growth and jobs for all of these young workers is going to have to be a top priority for the Indian leadership moving forward. And this glut of cheap energy that they are now enjoying is going to help with that tremendously. A big part of how Western economies were able to grow dramatically in the years following the Second World War was the abundant supply of cheap oil that they were able to secure from the Middle East. And if India is able to maintain access to these cheap petroleum imports that they're currently enjoying, it could enable a similar phase of massive growth. But what does any of this have to do with silver? Well, we all know that central banks around the world, in particular China and Russia, have been rapidly accumulating gold for the past year or so. But in India, there has been a tremendous demand for silver. Much of India's rural population prefers physical metal as a way to store value. They've got plenty of experience with unreliable fiat currencies, and a large part of the population does not have ready access to banking services. And there's also a long tradition in Indian culture of storing value in precious metals. For many Indian citizens, the high price may make gold impractical as a store of wealth or for daily transactions, but silver, on the other hand, this stuff is perfect. And just last year, Indian demand for physical silver was up 80%. And as the billion-plus citizens there begin to reap the benefits of economic growth and increased global competitiveness brought on by the steep discount in oil imports, they will need to store their increased wealth somewhere. Rural Indian farmers, you know, they're not buying futures contracts or shares in the SLV either. And that means that we can likely expect warehouse levels of real metal to continue to be depleted as hard money, physical silver bullion, flows from west to east. 
And I think that they're on the right track. I'm storing value in physical metals as well, and this is a trend that over the next decade or so, it could make this stuff a lot more scarce. That's why I'm still stacking. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, everyone. Smart Silver Stacker, out.